I did the advised things, got my financial situation in order, lawyered up big time, got proof of adultery and filed for divorce. going on everybody hope everybody feeling good hope everybody's doing well we are back with another story post guys i'll put this up on the screen if you want to check it out but you guys read the title let's just get into it so me 34 year old male with my wife 29 year old female of two years and her friends 29 to 38 males and females i caught her cheating on me and am now in the process of divorcing her. Her friends are trying their best to force a reconciliation and it's getting on my nerves. Infidelity. I dated my soon-to-be ex-wife for two years. We're engaged for one and then married for two. I caught her cheating. She tried to deny it at first, then gave every excuse in the book. One-time thing, I'm a sex addict, etc., I did the advised things, got my financial situation in order, lawyered up big time, got proof of adultery and filed for divorce. In my country, divorces can only be granted after a certain period of mandatory mediation and relationship counseling has been followed through with, and that is the situation we are at now. My soon-to-be ex-wife held some hopes of reconciliation, but I've managed to convince her that there is no chance of that happening. Good. Now, the problem. My soon-to-be ex-wife is a social creature and has a large group of friends, some of whom became my friends as well. A lot of them seem to have taken her side in this matter and are trying their level best to make me see reason. The primary antagonist here is my soon-to-be ex-wife's best friend, B, female, 30, and her husband, R, male, 33. They claim to be looking out for our best interests and don't want us to divorce since we are the golden couple of the group. The fact of the matter is, I don't particularly care for either B or R. I'm pretty sure B knew about the affair and may have been helped by my soon-to-be ex carry it out. She's incredibly loyal to her and would have helped her cover up a crime. I also know that one of the reasons B and R are so adamant at forcing a reconciliation is due to me being one of the recommenders for their current job. I have a reputation of being a vindictive a-hole when it comes to work, and they might be really scared of me scuppering their chances at any career growth. Except I'm not going to do that. They both got my recommendation for being very competent workers, and as long as they keep that up, I feel no need to have anything to do with their job. E and R and some other friends of theirs have been showing up at my regular haunts, and they have been trying to get my personal friends to talk to me as well. I have informed my soon-to-be ex about these incidents, and she assures me that she has nothing to do with it, and B and R are doing this of their own volition. I also sent an email to all people, including BNR, who have been trying to have a word with me about this, stating very plainly that there is no chance of me getting back with my soon-to-be ex, and their actions are not helping anyone. I also stated that I have no intentions of harming their careers either, so they have nothing to be afraid of. The only reply I got was a passive-aggressive response from B stating something along the lines of how she is doing it for her best friend and the man she loves and the fact that I think she is doing it for her career makes her sick. Yeah, she's doing it for her career. Following the email, there were two days of absolute silence. Then they all got back on the same routine. I've tried having a quiet word with all of them and it has not worked. I've tried a group email, and it has not worked, and I've even asked my soon-to-be ex, and that has not worked either. I have even thought about informing their bosses, but that would end up reflecting badly on me as well. I don't want to go to the police or the courts yet, but now it seems like the only option is left. So good people have read it. 
what the F do I do? To sum everything up, wife cheated. I'm divorcing her. Her friends want me to reconcile and are turning into stalkers. How do I get rid of them? Wow, let me give my thoughts. You know, I know they are doing it to save their butts. And it's so when you said, oh, I know she knew she was cheating. Dude, all her friends knew she was cheating. The friends always know. Whoever they're, whoever they're close with, if they're close with their sister or they got any friends, they know about the cheating. They knew well before you knew. They went and complained to them. You know, he doesn't bring me flowers on Sunday anymore like he used to. So I think this guy, Jim at work, I want to jump on his Johnson. You know, they find every dumb excuse to do it. Complaining about you. Oh, he does this. He does that. I hate when he does this. Oh, I'm so I'm going to go cheat. Oh, girl, just don't say anything. Oh, be my alibi. I'm pretty sure that whatever night it was when you contacted her and she said, oh, she's sleeping over here. You know, we drank a little too much, but she's asleep. Did she was with some other guy or something? You already know this. And yes, you're right. They're trying to save their careers. Gotta take what they say with a grain of salt. Come on. You know it. You're doing the right thing by divorcing her. She needs to face these consequences. Just go and cheat because of some whatever dumb reason. Oh, I'm a sex addict. Oh, I was feeling deprived. Just stupid stuff. It was a one-time thing. Really? No, it wasn't. They, they just start lying immediately. Once you catch them cheating, they just start lying. Oh, it was a one-time thing. No, this is like her fifth time cheating. <laughs> she just got caught. Oh, I, I'm addicted to sex. Why didn't you, like, why, why can't you bring these things up before I decide to marry you? You're a liar. You, they're just hiding things and... Ugh, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. Let's check out these comments. Don't go to your regular hunts for a few weeks. Block them in the social media and block their cause. If you have been reasonable requesting some time to heal and that you're confident in your decisions and they keep harassing you, then these people are not your friends. I don't want to sacrifice my regular hunts. OP says, that's where I meet my closest friends and that's where I feel comfortable. I don't feel the need to remove one of the bright spots of my life because my wife is a cheater and her friends are a-holes. I'm mewling over going absolutely no contact with them. The reason I haven't done it already is because they are still work-related stuff we may need to talk about. But yes, you're right. They are certainly no friends of mine. Absolutely. They're loyal to her. It's a tough situation, man. I mean, getting cheated on sucks, but having friends remind you about it frequently sucks even more, someone else said. If someone else, just tell them to F off. They clearly have no respect for your, in, for your decisions. Dude, tell them to F off. Hmm, quick question here. What is a haunt? Here's OP. In this context, I'm referring to the places I frequent outside of my house and workplace, namely my favorite restaurants and my favorite pub bar. I'm not sure how frequently you go there, but the places I frequent, I've gotten friendly with that with the staff there. If you're friends with them, any chance you can talk to the staff and have them handle things for you, if not ban them, then at least seat your ex-wife's friends as far from you as possible. <laughs> Someone said... A haunting is what ghosts do. So calling a place you visit a haunt is like saying you hang around it like a ghost is like a ghost is in a haunted place. They can't leave cuz they are tied spiritually to the place. I like the term. <laughs> I've actually never heard anybody refer to so I just reading it I knew he was referring to some place he goes to, but I never I never heard it a place you frequent and visit outside your home that I've never heard that before interesting um guys let me know what you think about this in the comments i will catch you guys at the next one i got with her two best 
friend. My cheating ex lied to all of our friends, saying I verbally targeted her after we broke up due to her cheating. None of my friends believed her, and a few of her friends I met were skeptical enough to text me and ask. One of her best friends, she had two, who were sisters, texted me and was asking me, so I told her the truth, and she apologized for knowing and not telling me that my ex was hanging out with other guys. I said it was alright and I was asking if she wanted to get a drink. We did, and hooked up a few times that week and hung out at her house. Then a week or so later, I ended up hooking up with her other best friend, who was the first best friend's sister. When my ex found out, she blew up my phone and apparently went to her best friend's house, yelling at them from outside until the cops showed up and made her leave. All the revenge and more. I've heard about cheating, but I never ever thought it would happen to me, especially with the girl I was with. I thought we were in love and I wanted to marry her someday. She cheated on me with my best friend, who unbeknownst to her, has had several STDs, one of which is incurable. That was all the revenge I needed. Wow. Spilling the beans. I found out that my wife was cheating on me with a politician. The politician's home numbers are public record. So I called his wife and I told her. Chaos ensued. He actually said, you had no right to do that. He did not go up for re-election, and in the divorce apparently got demolished by his wife. I got divorced too, and I am remarried now, and much happier. Wow. Just a taste of her own medicine. My wife had a very public affair in our small town when I was deployed overseas with the army. When I got back and found out, we ended up getting divorced and she moved the other guy into what had been our home. Dang. Their relationship was rocky from day one, go figure. And during one of their splits, he was out at a bar and hit on my best friend. She wasn't particularly interested in him, but she did a great job making a show of his attempts to court her over the next several months. It drove my ex absolutely insane. She looked like a fool. My bestie and I enjoyed the show, and that guy never knew what hit him. I almost feel sorry for the dude, though. Eh, or not. That'll teach her. I had an ex that I dated for three years cheat on me. Well, she got a degree, and after a year of looking, found a job she could use her degree for. We smoked a little back in the day, and so did the guy she cheated on me with. Her company has a strict policy against that kind of smoking. So I waited a couple of months after we split and I called the HR department and let them know that I saw her smoking and that someone in her position shouldn't be indulging in such frivolous activities. The company did a random drug test and of course, she failed and was let go a few days later. Now her degree is useless and she's working at a Dollar General. <laughs> My last girlfriend cheated on me, and she and her roommate at the time had gotten to the point in their lease where they weren't super fond of each other and kept some distance. Her roommate was smoking hot, kind of bratty sometimes, and wasn't fond of my ex. So I decided to make a move on her, and it was the best move ever. The look on my ex's face when her roommate walked me to the door in her underwear after the first night was priceless. We proceeded to have hot, dirty, loud fun almost nightly for the next eight weeks until their lease was up for a while after that. My ex even walked in on us in the living room once. There's no way I felt bad about it. Oh, savage. Savage. Doing nothing. I had a girl cheat on me once with my sister's boyfriend who had knocked up my sister already. Then she proceeded to hook up with everyone I thought I was friends with for the next month or two. Dang, she was, that's messed up. No joke, she slept with 12 guys in 4 weeks. I was devastated, but you want to know what my revenge was? 
Nothing. I never did anything except live my life and meet who is now my wife and start a wonderful life and family. Years later, I met her degenerate ex-husband and one of her illegitimate children from a different guy while she was in jail for cutting off a court-ordered tether and trying to flee the state. I chatted with the husband long enough to realize she hadn't changed a bit and hooked up with everyone he knew too and left him high and dry to take care of her kid, the one who actually had met her a few times. I had so much satisfaction out of that meeting that I feel I got my revenge. Nice, and on that note, guys, let me know what you think about this. That's a nice way to end it there. The best revenge, the best revenge. Walk away and become a better person. Don't go play in the dirt. He decided, This guy decided, I'm not going to go play in the dirt with her. Because he, he would have he would have just threw his life away. He probably wouldn't be what he is today. You know, probably be in jail right along with her. You know, who knows? She said, just get your stuff and go if you're going. Okay, no problem. Next day, she goes to work. I take the new TV, fridge, freezer, all my clothes and electronics in the front door. What's going on everybody? Hope everybody's feeling good. I hope everybody's doing well. We are back with another article. Guys, uh, remember I'll be back tonight at 8.30. Make sure you come back for that at 8.30. But, you guys read the title? Let's just get into it. So, people share stories of how they got revenge on a cheating ex. Nobody likes a cheater, especially the person who was cheated on. Finding out that a partner has been unfaithful can be an extremely painful experience. And people handle pain differently. Some get mad, some get even, and some get pints of Ben and Jerry's delivered to their door via Postmates. This post is about people who got even. I caught my ex-wife cheating a few years ago, and during the ensuing argument, she said, she said, just get your stuff and go if you're going. Okay, no problem. Next day, she goes to work. I take the new TV, fridge, freezer, all my clothes and electronics in the front door, which I just replaced and it was still outstanding on my credit card. I leave about five minutes before she's due home and the neighbor's keeping an eye on the place until she gets there. As you can imagine, I got a really interesting phone call which I sent to voicemail. About an hour later, I get a call from the police. She'd said that I stole the front door. I offered to show the police that it's on my credit card and hasn't been paid for yet, so it's mine. Never went back or spoke to her again. Always wondered how she managed with no front door until she got it replaced. <laughs> Savage, I like that. She probably had some guy come, Oh, oh, I can't believe he did that to you. Let me get a door on ASAP. He probably skipped out on work to put her door back on. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's guys like that, trust me. Let's check out another one here. My ex cheated with a married man. He now lives with her. Wow. Mm. He is a POS. But anyway, I still have logins for her DVR. I logged in, erased all her shows, then recorded only the show Cheaters. Petty, but it makes me laugh. <laughs> Yo, are you serious? <laughs> that is hilarious. That is hilarious. Oh my god. Let's check out another one. I deployed in mid-2014. Returned the first week of 2015. A super short, easy deployment. I came home to an empty home. Actually, someone else was living there. Check my email after finally getting cell signal turned back on and see an email from Southwest with a plane ticket. I catch a ride to the airport and fly back to my hometown. I finally get home almost 13 hours later dying to see my daughter. That night is when I found out my ex had been cheating on me 
for the for the six of the seven months I was gone. So I was asking her, what do you want to do? Do you want to work through this or stay here? And she couldn't make up her mind, which meant it's going to happen again. And I left back for my duty station. So I looked into how to make those glitter cards and just dump glitter everywhere. Oh, wow. I sat down and started making them, about 50 or so. And I printed out my ex-wife's address and had to do some digging to get her boyfriend's address. So I printed the address on stickers so it couldn't be identified by handwriting and began mailing. One every day for the next 25 days to each with each other being the return address. When I would Skype my daughter, I would be hearing my ex cry to her mom about the glitter and how I was really ticking her off that the boyfriend is doing this. <laughs> It may not be much, but it's that little F you I got off my chest that helped. Wow. <laughs> and on that note, guys, let me know what you think about these revenge stories. 